Good morning, good morning, Reignited Prayer. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Hey, Tashana. Good morning, Chanel. Hey, Pete. Look, I'm so focusing on you, Tashana. I didn't put the wrong number in. <laughs> Good morning, good morning. Hey, honey. Look, right. Right, Tashana. Uh-oh. Okay, let me try this again. Uh-oh. Hold on, y'all. Let me try this again. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. This is a day you have me. So I walk in love and put a smile on my face. But in case I run into someone on a different page, I'll maintain. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the 530. Reignited prayer call. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Welcome to the reignited prayer call. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I hope you had a great weekend. You enjoyed your families. Good morning. I, I can't even turn on my phone without being reminded of the lie that I am alone and broken, unsuccessful. Good morning, Tanya, Shalanda, Missy. Good morning. Good morning, Natra, Donna. Right, Peaches. This song is, yeah, the one before that, too. Good morning, Tammy. Good morning, you guys. My other intercessory sisters, good morning. I love the support. The support is amazing. Good morning, good morning. We'll give it about another minute, and then we're going to get started. The Lord has given me a word on last night. And I am excited to give it this morning. Good morning, good morning. Yes, Lord. Let me decrease, Lord. Good morning, Nina. Good morning, Darice. Good morning, Kim. Good morning. Happy Monday. Good morning. I, I thought my intentions were good. Just act like a Christian should and hope mm. that someone watching would approve and be inspired. But if you're not feeling the show, then how far could I go? Good morning, good morning, good morning. All good morning. My accomplishments go down in fire just because of the push up, push up, push up to be someone. That the church has made change is safe from me. All the pressure, pressure, pressure mm. to be someone that you did not create. Help me. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 We're going to go ahead and we're going to get started this morning.
pauses. We're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, you guys, to Reignited Prayer. I am super excited. I am your intercessory to intercessor today, Monday. And let's see here. I just want to thank each and every one of you. What the heck? Well, here we go. Each and every one of you for hopping on this Monday morning. I had hope you had a wonderful weekend. Um, I thank God for each and every one of you who get on with us every single morning on the Reignited Prayer Call that you've decided to just sacrifice a little bit of extra time in the morning to dedicate to the Lord. And I pray that, that this prayer call is truly blessing you. And so this morning, um, I am going to be coming um, to you out of the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter three, Daniel chapter three. And if I had to um, just give a, you know, a, a topic on this morning, it would be don't get burned under pressure. Don't get burned under pressure. Welcome, whoever just joined us on the call. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And so. I tell you, you know, just even listening to the song that we were just listening to by Jonathan McReynolds, there's the world can put so much pressure on to us, especially us as women that, you know, the world will push so, put so much pressure on us. They put pressure on us to look a certain way. They put pressure on us to, you know, have certain things and being able to, you know, um, uh, uh, they, they, they allow the things that we have to dictate who we are, right? The world puts pressure on us on how we should live, how we should live and what we should be doing. And, um, you know, it, it, it's a lot of pressure that weighs us down that's on our shoulders. Well, let's go to the book of Daniel chapter three. And um, I'm going to do a lot of paraphrasing. You need to go back, read this story and ask God to give you a revelation out of this story as well. And so in Daniel chapter three, um, it's talking about um, the three Hebrew, bro Hebrew boys. And these were Daniel's friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I know a lot of you guys are familiar with the story um, that they were tossed into a fiery furnace. And we all know the story of Daniel, and I'm going to go through it a little bit. But um, they were put under pressure. They were put under pressure. Um, and it says, you know, that they, uh, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, he um, had a gold statue or he built some kind of gold um, statue in, and he wanted everybody to bow down to this statue, to this gold statue. And he said that, you know, whenever the um, the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, and the psaltery, whenever they play, he wanted everybody um, to bow down to it. Well, <laughs> we had three boys. We had three boys who said, you you know what? Uh-uh. We're not bowing down to this thing. This is not our God. We know who our God is. This is not our God. And so um, because they didn't bow down to it, um, the, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar said that whoever doesn't will be put into a fiery furnace. And again, you guys, I'm paraphrasing this whole story and I'm going somewhere. So just bear with me just for a minute. And so um, um, the, the different um, um, different ones from the city brought the three um, to King Nebuchadnezzar and um, King Nebuchadnezzar asked them, is it true? We're in verse 14, three and 14. Is it true that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image, which I have set up? Now, if you are ready at this time, okay, he said, if you are ready at this time, I want you to fall down and worship this image that I have made. But if you do not worship, you should be cast immediately into the midst of the furnace. And then he asked a question. Then King Nebuchadnezzar asked a question. He said, and who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? That's the question that he asked. And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. And I just thought that was so good because, you know, when you... When you're trying to do right and you're trying to, you know, you're going to church, you're fasting, you're doing all of these things, people will ask you questions. Well, what you doing that for? Why are you doing this? Why are you always fasting? Why are you always getting up early in the morning, getting on a reignited prayer call? Why are you dedicating so much time to the Lord? Why every time the church doors open, you always trying to be at the church? Come on now. Like people ask these questions, but guess what? Just just like the three boys said, we don't have no need to answer you in this manner. You don't have to answer the people who are asking you these questions in that manner. You don't have to answer what they're telling you, right? And so 
You just can't do everything that everybody is trying to do in the way that they're trying to do it and how they cope with things. So you got to do things the way that God has told you to do these things, right? And so Nebuchadnezzar in verse 19 was full of fury because they didn't answer him. They didn't bow down. So he was mad, y'all. He was big mad. You know how they say he big mad. <laughs> and so um, the expression on, it says even the expression on his face change towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And y'all know, as soon as, you know, you, you, you coming in, you, you know, you, you coming into church and you dress nice or you this or you that, and y'all know you get those expressions and them looks like, mm-hmm, what's she, mm-hmm, what's she about, what's she doing, da 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 you know, the expression on King Nebuchadnezzar's face changed. And so he spoke and commanded that the heat of the furnace get um, turned up seven times more. So he said, you know what? These boys that made me so mad, I'm going to turn up the heat. I'm going to turn it up even higher than what it usually is. And so he commanded um, the men to be put into the fiery furnace. And so it says, then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments. We're on verse 21. It says these men were bound in everything that they had on. And so I just wanted to tell you this morning that sometimes we get bound in the things that we're wearing. And it might not be a physical coat or a physical, our physical trousers or our pants, but sometimes we get bound in the mess that we're in. We get bound in the financial stresses of the world. Sometimes we even get bound in our relationship issues. We'll allow our marriage to bound us. We'll allow different things that's on us to bound, to bound us, just like these men were bound when they were getting ready to be put into the fire. And that's sometimes what God does is he, he the, 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 I'm sorry, the enemy will try to bind us before he starts taking us through the fiery furnace. And so it says, therefore, because the king's command was urgent, the furnace ex was exceedingly hot and the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And so if you notice, the fire that killed the men that put them in the furnace, and, and, and these men were taking Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to the furnace, and it killed those men. So I said, Lord, that's, that's crazy, because these men had the three boys with them, it didn't kill the three boys, but it killed the men. My God. Mm. And so, you know, I would have thought that, you, you know, you would think that that would be a sign to the king, like, wait a minute, how did it kill my men, but it didn't kill these three boys? And so at that point, I would already, if I was King Nebuchadnezzar, I would have already been scared. Like, okay, you know what? It killed my men and not these boys. So we finna stop this process right now because I don't know what's going on. But King Nebuchadnezzar went on to put these boys into the fiery furnace. And so sometimes in life, things try to kill us. You know, sometimes the divorce tried to kill us. Sometimes being fired from our job tried to kill us. You know, sometimes even our children, you know, with the things that they go through, it tries to kill us. But God is already protecting us in what we're going through. God already knows we're about to be put in the fire. So the things that are coming up in our life, the stresses that are coming up in our life that are trying to take us out, God is saying, uh-uh-uh. It might take out the next person, but it's not going to take you out because you are my child. You are my child, my God. And so and I'm on down to, to 23 and it says, and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they fell down bound in the midst of the burning furnace. They fell down bound in the midst of the fire. And so when you're under pressure, when you're under pressure, you're in the fire. You know, even the Bible says in Proverbs that the just man fell down seven times and he rises up again. But because they were bound, they fell down. And a lot of times, even when we're going through things, when we're going through the things that I mentioned earlier, we might fall down. We might fall down. But see, the falling down isn't all bad sometimes. Falling down isn't always, you know, oh my goodness, she fell. She, 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 she got into this, um, this, um, you know, mess or, you know, she, uh, she don't have this anymore. And so she fell down and people want to look at you and they want to look down on you because you might've fell down because you might not be where you wanted to be, or you might not be where you should be, or because you were up here and God had to bring you back down sometimes. And so people look on you because you fell down. But let me tell you, sister, 
the falling down is not a, always a bad thing because we have to fall down at Jesus' feet. We have to get on our knees at Jesus' feet. We have to lay prostrate before the Lord and we have to go to him because when we're down, when we're laying prostrate, that's when he comes in and he can rescue us. That's when he can come in and he can minister to us. That's when he can come in because we have surrendered ourselves and now he can come in to the glory of the Lord shall come in. He can come in and he can move us to where he wants to have us. My God, amen. And so it says, then um, King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. He was astonished. And he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? So you down, and while you down, everybody want to kick you. Everybody want to, you know, uh, j jump on you. And everybody want to pounce on you. But he said, did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? And they answered and said to the king, true, O king. And then he said, look, he answered, I see four men loose, my God. The Bible says what's loose on earth will be loose in heaven, my God. Walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt. And he says the form of the fourth is like the son of God. And I tell you, he said it looks like the son of God. And he says, now remember back in verse 15, he said, who is this God that will deliver you? Remember he asked that question, but I tell you what, come verse 25, I guess he said, well, my men didn't get, in, uh, my men got burnt, but these didn't. Then he said, my goodness, these men were in here they were bound now they're loose now there's a fourth person and by verse 25 he's saying and the fourth of the form and the form of the fourth is like the son of god so now he know the son of god <laughs> did nobody have to tell him nothing he said i know he said looks like the son of god my god and so then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High, come out and come here. But listen to what he said. The Bible says, the Bible says, then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace. So that furnace was still on fire. It was still hot. But the Lord allowed Nebuchadnezzar to go to the mouth of the furnace without getting burned up. My God. See, sometimes our enemies, our enemies, those people that they want to see us burn. They want to see us not make it. They want to see us depressed. They want to see us lacking. They want to see all these things. But God will allow them to live to see you come out of the fire. My God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> See, God will allow your enemies to see you come out of the fire. Just like he said he, uh, 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 in, in, in Psalms, he will make room for you, put, uh, put your enemies at the table, he'll make your table. They say, but, you know, they'll make your, your enemies and make your table bigger and bigger. And so that's exactly what's happening here is God allowed Nebuchadnezzar to come to the, to the fire without getting burned just so he can call out the three Hebrew boys out of the fire. My God, thank you, Jesus. And so... I'm telling you, then in verse, it says, then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the midst of the fire and the, the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the king's counselors gathered together and they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected, and the smell of the fire was not on them. My God. See, see, God protected them during the fire, just like he protects you while you're going through situations, while you're going through, you know, trials and tribulations. God will protect you. And when he calls you out and you come out, you will come out not singed. You will come out just as pure gold. You will come out with, with none of your hair singed. You will come out and people are going to be looking at you like, what? Just like all the governors and administrators were looking at them, people are going to look at you like, how she get out of that? How she come out of that? And then how she looking like she looking? She still got a smile on her face. My God. She still happy. She still have her joy. She still has her peace. She still has everything that God has given her. She didn't come out uh, sin. She didn't come out even smelling like smoke. She got a good sweet aroma about her. She doesn't smell like the 
the smoke that she was just in. My God, thank you, Jesus. And so skipping down to verse 29, it says, therefore I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which, speak, which speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut to pieces and their houses shall be made as um, ash heap because there is no other God who can deliver like this. Women of God, there is no other God who can deliver you like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm. There's no other God. We can't put our trust in alcohol. We can't put our trust in drugs, prescription medications, into sex. We can't put our trust into a man. We can't put our trust and our hope into nothing but the Lord because he is the only one who can deliver you while you are under pressure in the fire. My God. And so in verse 30, it says, that then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Then he promoted them. And that's what I want to tell you today. Um, the Lord is saying that once you come out of the fire, once you come out of the pressures of this world, once you come out, God is going to promote you. He is going to give you those promises that he promised you. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about the enemies who's trying to put you in a fire, who's talking about you. You don't have to even worry about yourself, even when you, when you doubt yourself. See, sometimes we doubt ourselves and we put our own selves through the fire because of what we're thinking and because of how we're thinking and what we're doing. But once God brings you out of the fire, my God, he will promote you. He will put you on top. He will make you the head and not the tail my god thank you jesus he will allow you to be the lender and not the borrower thank you jesus that right tanya there is no other god like our god my god and so this morning when the when the weight of the world the pressures of this world are on your shoulders ladies you have got to put your trust your hope in the lord because he will bring you out. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that this word helped you on this morning. I know it sure helped me because, I mean, we go through things. We go through trials. We go through tribulations. And it seemed like sometimes, Lord, just like, it seemed like we just getting burnt. Like on every hand, it's coming from every direction. But God is saying, uh-uh-uh. I'm going to call you out of the fire. I'm going to call you out of the fire. And when I do, I'm going to promote you. My God. Thank you, Jesus. And so, for those of you who are on this call and you might be saying, you know what? It's a lot of pressure on me right now. You know, I'm going through a lot right now. It feels like I'm walking on hot coals. It feels like I'm going through the fire and my mind is just cluttered. My mind is just, it, it, it's just so much going on in my mind. I, I, I tell you to lean on Jesus, to lean on Jesus, come back to God. Maybe you need to rededicate your life and, and, and to God. And so according to Romans, according to Romans, let me just turn to it very quickly. According to Romans, it says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you will be saved. And so the only way to get your peace back, to get your joy back, is through God. And so I, 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 I pray that you will restore your relationship if it needs to be restored. I pray that if you need to get back into Christ and to fully surrender yourself and put your hands up so that he can save you from the fire that you do that on today. My God. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to pray. Most gracious Father, Lord God, we just thank you, God. We thank you for allowing us to see another day, God. We thank you for waking us up in our right minds, giving us our health and our strength, God. We thank you for waking us up and our families are doing well, Lord God. Lord, we just thank you for all that you have done, God. We thank you for your word on this morning, God. Just like you were in the fire with the three Hebrew boys, Lord God, we know that you're going to be with us, oh God. We might be bound in our minds, God. We we might be bound in the, the, the troubles and the pressures of this world, Lord God, but we know that you're going to protect us from the fire, Lord God. We know that you're going to protect us from our enemies, oh God. And when you do, God, you're going to call us out and you're going to promote us, Lord God. And we thank you for that in the name of Jesus, Lord. We know that we have an assignment that you have given us, oh God, and we're going to walk in our assignment, Lord God. We know that there's going to be a process, Lord God. There's going to be some pain that we're going to have to go through, Lord God. But we know through the process and through the pain, pain that you're going to 
bring us to the promise, God. And we're thanking you in advance for it, Lord God. Lord, we know, God, that some of the women are going to get delivered from this word, oh God. That some of the women are going to get a little bit of pressure eased up off of them through this word, Lord God. And we thank you for that right now in the name of Jesus, God. I ask that you just be with each and every one of these women as they go throughout their day on today, Lord God. Lord, I pray for the intercessors that are coming um, through the through the next few days, um, Lord God, in the on the morning prayer call, Lord God, that they give a word out to these women, to us, oh God, that we can just go on a little bit further, Lord God, that we can just go into your word a little bit more, Lord God, that we can just get that burning fire desire in our hearts, oh God, to just want to love on you more, oh God, to want to seek you more, oh God, to just be in your presence more, oh God, Lord, we just thank you for that right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, Lord, we thank you for all that you have done, Lord God, we thank you for all that you are going to do, and we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you, God. Well, thank you guys again for getting on this morning on the Reignited Prayer Call. We will see you back on this call tomorrow morning at 530. God bless.